You gave beauty for my ashes Found gold in my reclaim Made a future from my past and Set me on a run to save So before we get started, we're going to pray tonight. Amen. How many is excited about being in the house of God? Just excited to be alive this today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
So let's go before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are. God, you are magnificent in all of your ways. God, we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. God, we exalt you, oh God, for you are Elohim. You are God. God, you are all that we need tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for our grace that you gave us this morning. We thank you, oh God, that you woke us up with a touch of love, oh God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you allowed us to come into this house to give you thanks and praise, oh God, to sit at your feet and learn of you, oh God, tonight. God, we just bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you, oh God. Bless those individuals that are here in the house, those that are watching us via social media. We ask right now, God, that you would do a work in on the inside of us. God, we thank you, God, that we are perfectly imperfect, but we know that we serve a perfect God, a God that don't make no mistakes, oh God, a God that can do exceedingly above above all that we could ask or think. So God, we thank you tonight as we sit at your feet. Fill us up, oh God, with your love. Fill us up, oh God, with your word that will bring transformation to our lives, oh God. God, fill us up, oh God, tonight, God, that we won't leave this place the same way that we came in, oh God. Fill us up, oh God, tonight with your power, God, with your strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. We're open, God. We're open to you, oh God. We're open, oh God. Come in and have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand clap of praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. And as I begin to th think about this theme, um, God laid on my heart perfectly imperfect. Because I think about us as women, and I'm sorry, Pastor Horace, but us as, as women, we always got something that we want to change about ourselves. I mean, we always got something that we want to change about ourselves. And then when he changes it, we still not satisfied. We got something else that we won't change. We, our hair too dark, it's too light. We too tall, we too short, just always something. So God said, you know what? They are perfectly imperfect, but they're perfect through me, amen? So let, I'm going to give you the definition of imperfect. Imperfect means faulty, flawed, you're damaged, you're broken, cracked, incomplete, and beyond, below standard. So I know you don't think of yourself that way. I, you couldn't possibly think of yourself that way. But perfectly means a way that could not be better. Absolutely, totally. So guess what? If we put them two definitions together, we are totally broken. We're totally broken. We're totally damaged. We're absolutely incomplete. But I want you to know tonight, tonight we're going to find out, but to be a Christian or a believer, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It means that we are imperfect women and men saved by grace. We're saved by grace. So in, 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 this is not our scripture, but in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 in the NIV version, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. By grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but it's the gift from God. Not by works so that no one can boast. So it is grace and faith alone that did it. Nothing else could have done it. Grace alone and faith alone. Grace covers all of our imperfections. Everything that we feel is a problem, grace covers that. Thank you, G. Amen. Thank you, G. So in the next few weeks, we're going we gonna to discover some things. We're going we gonna to learn about how to own our own story. Own your own story. It's okay. I'm, I'm imperfect in the area. I failed somewhere along the way. I, something happened in my past that I didn't like, but I'm going to own my own story. I'm going to embrace who I am in my imperfections. I'm going to learn that it's okay not to be okay. It is okay not to be okay. Our mistakes does not exclude us from the grace of God. Our mistakes does not exclude us from the grace of God or the call that he has on our life. Just because we failed in an area doesn't mean that the grace of God is not on our lives. God can use our biggest shame to be our biggest blessing. He can, guess what? He can take something that you felt as if was so bad and he can magnify for his glory. 
something that you just feel like is just I can't believe that happened. Oh, I can't believe that I did that. Oh, I did this. And he can magnify for his glory. So you think you a hot mess. We're going to learn about some people tonight that was a mess. And it's so ironic that Minister Bird on Sunday used these exact words. And when I went to my notes from Friday, I got excited. Pastor Harvest wasn't at home, so I had to go to Asia. And I said, Asia, look at my notes. I said, I, have, I just picked up my tablet. Look at my notes. In my notes, it said, who told you that God couldn't use you because of your past imperfection? Who told you? I said, God, look at this. And she used those same words on Sunday. Who told you that God couldn't use you because you made some mistakes? Who told you that? Who told you that he couldn't do what he wanted to do in you because you went some places that you shouldn't have went? You said some things that you shouldn't have said. You end up in some places that you shouldn't have been in. You, who said that God couldn't use you because you had a baby before you got married? Who said that God couldn't use you because you got bad credit or you lied or you backslid? Who told you that, that God couldn't use you? So who said being a hot mess at this, at one point in time, even if it was today, guess what? Some of us probably slipped up today. I add you, Jesus. Some of us probably slipped up today. But who, that don't exclude us from the grace of God, though. That don't exclude us from the grace of God for a God to do great things in the kingdom and to be used by him. So all these great people that we talk about in the Bible, all these great people we read about, they were imperfect. They were not perfect people. Abraham was old. Elijah was suicidal. The suicidal rate is out of control, and especially among our people. Joseph was abused. Job went bankrupt. Moses had a speech problem. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute, and we're going to talk about her tonight. Uh, the Samaritan woman divorced many times. She had many husbands. Noah was a drunk, but yet he built the ark. Jeremiah was young. David was a murderer. Jonah ran from God. Help me, Father. Naomi was a widow. Peter denied Christ three times, and Paul persecuted the Christians before he became one. So look at all these people that um, we read about, and we think that they didn't have any issues. They had issues the same as we have issues. Amen? So do we see perfection here? Absolutely not. We don't see much perfection in all of these people. So in Romans 8.28, and the word of God said, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Called according to whose purpose? His purpose. Not our perfect pur purpose. His purpose. God is not working to make us look good or feel good, but to, be, to fulfill his purpose. Just guess what? When we fulfill his purpose, we just happen to look good. When we fulfill his purpose. So we see throughout the Bible, God used all these imperfect people for his sake. We may, uh, we may not know why he chose these individuals, but we can only guess that he used them to show three things, his strength, his power, and his plan. He wanted to show his strength, his power, and his plan. And God, guess what? God can still use you today. Same thing with us. We're asking God. How many ask? I'm not sure if people even really ask God, you know. God, can you really use me like me? I'm not educated. I don't have a degree. I didn't go to theology school. This is me talking to myself. I didn't go to theology school. I, you know, all these big bishops and prophets and all of these great men and women of God. But God said, yeah, I can use you. I, I can use you. God said, yes, you're right, and you're right for the picking. I still can use you. Even in your mess, I still can use you. Even in your shortcomings, I still can use you. So he didn't call the popular. He didn't call the rich. He didn't call those people that were successful, but rather he called the poor, the broken, and the faithful, those individuals that are faithful. He calls those that had issues. He wants his glory to be magnified. God's glory is magnified through our issues, especially when we come out on top. When we come out on top, it's not about us. Pastor Horace said something the other day that was so profound. Uh, he said, our victory, no, that ain't how he said it. He said, we get the victory, but God get the glory. We get the victory, but God get the glory. So I can only imagine all these uh, 
uh, these uh, religious leaders in the Bible back in the in back in the Bible days, the the Pharisees. I'm sure they were saying things of why he. I'm not listening to that person because they are misfit. They don't they don't fit in. They don't they don't fit on my standard. So why, how could God use those people? And I'm and I'm sure we are not. I'm sure there's no one in true love that are, are, are sitting here. Even those people that are listening that are saying. Um, these same things about people today. Well, she messed up. I know we're not pointing fingers because we all have fallen short. All of us. All of us have fallen short. So don't pass judgment by what you see or what you know. All of us has fallen short. So in Philippians 3.14, it's that I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But verse 15 says, all of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection should have this attitude so all of us that are mature should be pursuing spiritual perfection and we should have this same attitude we're pressing i may have fallen about a wayside but i'm pressing i may have a hiccup but i'm pressing i'm pressing toward the mark so let's talk about this this familiar individual that god used to bring glory to his kingdom let's talk about rahab the prostitute and it's so ironic to me that every time they talked about this woman, they used her unpopular occupation. How many times are we doing that today to people? Mm. Valerie, the liar, the backbiter. I remember when she was. I remember when Lexus was. I can remember when, when Nisa was this. How many times are we attaching people in perfection to their name instead of calling them who God called them? Amen. So every time in the word of God, they spoke of her as um, Rahab, the prostitute. But guess what? We're going to see tonight that the blood cleansed her and changed that in Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew in a minute. But we know that we wouldn't go. Um, how many know that we wouldn't go to a prostitute uh, to seek out answers? Not today anyway. My, I, I don't. Let me say this. I don't know of anyone that would just go on the street corner and ask a prostitute for some answers. First of all, again, we, we, we looking at it with our physical eyes by what we know. But we don't know that God can use anybody. God can use anybody. So let's go to Joshua 2. We're going to Joshua 2, Joshua 2nd chapter. We're going to talk about this woman just a little bit because she she was a prostitute. That, enough said right there. And you already know what that means. So let's go to Joshua 2, the first chapter. And I'm going to read 1 through 11. I'm going to read kind of fast. I'm going to try to anyway. Then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Akedah. He instructed them, spy out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of the prostitute named Rahab, and they stayed there the night. But someone told the king of Jericho, of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab. But out of the men who had come into the house, they are spies, sent here to discover the best way to attack us. Rahab had hid the two men, replied. The men were here earlier, but I, did, I don't know where they were from. They left the city at dusk as the city gates were about to close, and I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath the pile of flag. So the king men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossing places of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men left, the city gate shuts. I want you to know something right there. God will move some things out of your way. God will move some things out of your way to get you where he wants you to be. So unfortunately, Rahab, she lied, but she was already a prostitute. So, you know, I, don't, I guess she thought, pretty much thought that that wasn't that bad. So uh, verse 9, verse 8, I'm sorry. Before the spies went to, the, went to sleep that night, Rahab went up to the rooftop with them. 
I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone is living in terror. But we have heard how the Lord made a dry path of the Red Sea when you left Egypt. I'm dropping down to uh, verse 11. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such thing. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. I'm going to read 12. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee there. That. So here we talk about uh, Rahab the prostitute. How ironic is it that uh, in your mind, I know you're probably thinking, they came, two men came to her house first. Pretty much let you know that most men stop at her house. She's in the red light district. Okay? So... We already know. But these two men came to her house for a purpose. And I really believe in my hearts of heart. God is so sovereign and God can do what he want to do when he want to do it. Guess what? He didn't really didn't need the spies. He didn't really need the spies to, to, to conquer Jericho. Because if he had already parted the Red Sea, if he already rained down a fire from heaven, guess what? He could have conquered Jericho without the spies. So I really believe God in his sovereignty wanted them there for the salvation of the prostitute. That was a setup by God. Sometimes we don't understand why God do what he does and why he uses who he used. We have to trust the process. We have to trust that God know what he's doing. Amen. So how can a woman of this statue demonstrate the faith of God in spite of her lifestyle? Because even in her, when she went up to talk to them, she told them, I, I, I know, we, we heard about your God. I heard about your God. It's something about your God that I know y'all can do this for me. So, you know, even in her mess up, even in her faults, even in her dirt, even in her failures, she knew that God was a God of faith. So God can take our mess and make it a miracle. And we're going to see how she had a miracle come out of this situation with her. So even in her wrong, she had heard that God of Israel, that the spies, that the God that they served was the true and living God. So you, don't, you can't tell me um, that we live in a world, even though you haven't given your life to Christ, you haven't heard of the Savior. It's, it, it's, it's kind of impossible because it's on the radio, it's on the TVs, it's on social media. Even if you hadn't heard all about him, you have you got some recollection of who God is. You know that there is a God. You, you can either choose to serve him or you choose not to serve him, but you know that there is a God. So even in her wrong, she had heard that God of Israel, that the spy served, was the true and living God. She told them, I heard how he parted the Red Sea when y'all left Egypt and all the other miracles that took place. So, you know, she, that seed of faith was already planted on the inside of her. Even, even before they arrived, she already had that seed planted on the inside of her. So my question to you all tonight is, if God, if God dried up the Red Sea for them, God can dry up the Red Sea you're facing today. What Red Sea are you facing today that has got you paused or delayed? Because, see, they couldn't move until the sea was open. So what, sea, what Red Sea is in your life that you need God to open up so you can move forward in him? You ought to think about that for a moment. In, in, um, in verse 10, uh, it says, we heard, I want to bring that out, for we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you. We heard, but who spoke? Rahab spoke. Rahab acted on what she heard. Everybody in the town heard. Everybody knew that there was a God that did all these great things, but nobody responded but Rahab the prostitute. Rahab said, listen, I'm, I'm in need of something. I'm trying to get out of this mess that I'm in. So guess what? I need to open my mouth and say something. So everyone heard about Rahab. Everybody heard about it, but Rahab acted. So she made a decision despite her imperfections. She said, I want to find, I want to, I want to know this God. I want to know this God that y'all serve in Israel. I want to know this God that can do this for me. I want to know this God that can save my family. So she wasn't selfish either. I want y'all to know that, lady. She wasn't selfish. Because she said, God, now if I need you to save me, my father, my mother, my brothers, my sister, and all their families. 
she didn't just say, bring me out. So she wanted everybody to be rescued. And verse 11 said, for the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. So Rahab had two strikes against her. She was a Gentile and she was a prostitute, but she had faith. She had faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible. It was faith that spared her and her family's life. And as we look at Rahab, we keep thinking about her as Rahab the prostitute. Why can't we look at her as Rahab the faith walker? Rahab the one that took an act of faith to save herself and her family. It would be that same faith that Rahab had that would turn things around for you regardless of your past or your disapproval of others. Because sometimes it's the disapproval of other people that keep us stagnated. We want to prove us. We want to be. We want to prove something to somebody else, or we don't want to disappoint them, or we're concerned about what they think about it. Who cares what you think? Who cares what you think? What is what it what it, it is what God says. Amen. It was her faith that saved her. If we go back to Ephesians 2, 8, what I talked about earlier, it is it said, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It was by grace that Rahab was saved through faith. It was her faith that saved her. So in Hebrews eleven thirty one, 31, it says, it was by faith that Rahab the prostitute did not die with all the others in her city who refused to obey God. Everybody in that city heard. Everybody in that city knew. Everybody. But Rahab took an act of faith and said, I'm going to speak out for me and my family. How many of us speaking out today? She was an unlikely candidate to be chosen for this type of faith. Who would have thought a prostitute could save their household? Who would have thought the person that's a drug addict in your household can save your household? Who would have thought the person that's on drug or alcohol can save your household? How many of us that we, we got the white collar jobs, we got six figures, we live in nice houses, we got nice cars, but our brothers and sisters living on the street, they panhandling. Who would have thought that that person could save your household? You, the one that you look down on. It was by faith, not by her works, because it definitely wasn't by her works. Because of God and his sovereignty could have used any person. He could have did any plan to get them to conquer the land that he had promised them. But he chose Rahab, the prostitute, in her imperfections, in her mess, in her sin, to assist the plan that he had. God had a plan, but he used the prostitute to make the plan happen. So he can use any of us. So you ought to look at your neighbor. You ought to tell your neighbor, he chose you in your imperfection. Now you put your hand on yourself and say, he chose me in my imperfection. In my imperfection, he chose me. Now if we go to Joshua chapter 6, we're going to see, and you don't have to turn there, Victor. You're going to see that uh, what happened with Rahab. Joshua chapter 6. verse 17 and then I'm going to drop to 22 to 25 verse 17 says the city and everything in it must be de completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house were, will be spared for she protected our spies 22 then Joshua said to the two spies, keep your promise. Go to the prostitute's house. We won't let her go. We won't, we won't let her be delivered. We won't let that woman be delivered. We're going to call her that until Matthew. We're going to see it, Matthew. Then Joshua said to the two spies, keep your promise. Go to the prostitute house and bring her out along with all her family. The young men went in and brought out Rahab, her, fa her father, her mother, her brother, and all the other relatives who was, with, who was with her. They moved her whole family to a safe place near the camp of Israel. Then the Israelite burned the city and everything in it, including the people that heard. Only the things that made her made from gold, 
silver, bronze, and iron was kept for the treasury of the Lord's house. So Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, and her relatives who were with her in the house because she had hidden the spies Joshua sent to Jericho, and she lived among the Israelites to this day. God will put you in a place that you don't even deserve to be. She didn't deserve to be in the, with the Israelites. She didn't deserve to be there with them. But God opened up that door for her to move not only her, but all of her folks with her. So after saving Rahab, the prostitute, and her family from being destroyed, God said, not only am I going to save her from being killed and her family, but I'm going to clean her up. I'm going to transform her. I'm going to change her life. And guess what? He made her a part of the lineage of the Jesus Christ, the Messiah. She was, um, she was King David, great, great grandmother. So look how God can take a mess and bring you over to a miracle. Who would have thought this woman? And I'm sure she didn't. I'm sure she didn't think that, but she knew. She knew something was about. It was something about this God that everybody else was serving. That they, they gods wasn't doing much for her. They were serving all types of idol gods over there, and she still had to do what she was doing. So she wasn't getting no help. So she had to cross over to the true and living God, the supreme God. So he changed her name in Matthew 1.5. He changed her name with no imperfection attached. No longer am I called Valerie the liar. I'm Valerie. No longer is she called Rahab the prostitute. She's Rahab. She don't have that imperfection attached to her anymore. We see here that um, she was married. She got married. Well, Salmon married her. Let's fix that. Salmon married Rahab. And uh, who would have thought, who marries a prostitute? You know, who marries a prostitute? I'm sure you're asking. But God had a plan. God said, I got a plan for you. See, you see her past as a prostitute, but Salmon saw a woman of courage. He needed to use Salmon as an example. Don't focus on the past but on the presence. When you see somebody in perfection, know that God is working. When we see somebody falling by the wayside, we need to instantly go in prayer and know that God is working. Amen. We don't need to beat them down because guess what? We once was in that same situation. And that's exactly what he wants to do in us today. In spite of our imperfections, in spite of our flaws, in spite of our failures, we are still usable. We still are striving for perfection. We are still usable by God. If God can take a prostitute and get her married off to someone special and put her in the lineage of Jesus Christ, don't you know that what, you, what he did for her, he can do for you no matter what you did, how long you did it, and who you did it with. Know that your past does not determine your future. Your past don't determine your future. What, and some things people say, well, I would never tell nobody what I did. I'm going to take that to the grave. You know what? Sometimes you need to tell that testimony. That's the very testimony that you need to tell somebody. That's the very thing you, the thing that you're trying to hide and take it to the grave is the thing that you need to let somebody know to get somebody else out of bondage. And don't worry about it if they judge you because they have messed themselves. Don't even worry about it. So you think about the next time you... God prick your heart to tell somebody something about your past or your failures. You ought to just come on out and just tell them. Just go and tell them. And you know what? My thing is this. It's hard for me to believe a testimony of somebody that ain't never been through nothing. Ain't much you can tell me every time you look around, your, your story is real great. Ain't nothing going on with you. You just good. It's kind of it's hard for me to communicate with you because this is life, honey. He went to grace had to cover this sometime. Grace had to take care of this sometime. So I find it real strange. I find, I find it difficult to, to commune with individuals that's always got it together. I just find it hard because I need grace over here. I need grace over here. I may be late to be, but I mess up. I, I mess up. So in Ephesians 1, 5, Ephesians 1, chapter 5 in the NLT version, it says, God decided in advance, y'all. When I read that, I almost fell off the couch. It said, God decided in advance, before you was thought of, to adopt us into his own family 
by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. He knew in advance that we was going to mess up. He knew in advance that we were going to have some failures. He knew in advance that we were going to have some setback and some setup. He knew in advance, but yet he draw us, us unto himself. He knew that you would be broken, that you would be flawed and messed up, stinking and nasty. He knew all of that in advance. He knew about your shortcomings, but yet he said it gave him great pleasure to adopt you in all of your mess. It gave him pleasure to do that. So in verse uh, Ephesians 1, 4, I want to read this out of the um, New Living. Uh, Ephesians 1, 4. This is not the actual scripture, but this is the life application part. It said, it is hard to understand how God could accept us. Because of Christ, we are holy and blameless. In his sight, God chose us. And when we being belong to him through Christ Jesus, God looks at us as if we had never sinned. God looks at us as if we'd never sinned. All we can do is express our thanks for his wonderful love. God looks at us as if we had never sinned. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine. I, I just want to close my eyes and think about all the things that I've done, even if it was today. Because somebody vexed me today. Yes. And I said, God, I, I hear you. I got an assignment to do. I don't want to fall off course here. But I feel myself getting heated. Cover me with grace. Amen. Cover me with grace. So he took all of that, y'all, blameless. So what that word blameless means we're innocent. We're guiltless. We're sinless. We're in the clear. We're spotless. We're perfect. We're absolutely perfect. So take all of those words that we spoke about in the beginning and ex exchange those words for what the word says we are in Christ Jesus. Speak those words over your life. Say, I'm faultless. I'm blameless. I'm made in the righteousness of God. God looks at me through the eyes of his son. The blood covered that. So when you mess up, say, get the blood covered that. The blood cleansed that. The blood saved me from that. So when the enemy tries to bring up your past, you tell the enemy about his future, even if the enemy is people. Even if the enemy is your family, because sometimes your family is your worst enemy. And you would think your family would be the ones that would hold you, that would support you, that would lift you up. But even your own, sometimes your own family will point, you know, would point fingers at you and make you feel less than what God has called you to be. So don't, don't allow people to dictate what your future looked like because of what your past was. Don't allow nobody to dictate what God can do through you and use you because of what you, the mess that you've been in. Just because I've been in a mess don't mean he can't use a message from me. So just don't allow people to do that. So our past does not determine our future. Rahab was perfectly imperfect, yet she had faith in God and was used by God. We are all perfectly imperfect, but yet we can be used by God. God wants to use us. He desires to use us. But the thing is, how, how often are we not stepping forward and allow him to use us because of what we've done? We condemn our own self. We put our own self down. We, we, we say, I, I, mm -mm, I ain't going to do that. I can't do that because God, I can't do that because you know the situation I'm in. The best time he can use you is when you're in a mess. That's the best time that he can use you is when you're in a mess. If you call upon him, he'll show you great and mighty things even in the midst of your mess. He can do that. So I want to encourage us tonight. I want to encourage us. Don't allow, use the, the story of Rahab. What, look at how she knew that God could deliver her and her people. 
when she, even even in her wrongdoing, she never asked the spies about God. She never said, listen, I need God to clean me up first. She didn't ask God to clean her up. She just said, God, I need you to save. I need, I need you to save us. That's what I need you to do. I'm doing you a favor, so I need you to scratch my back. I'm going to scratch yours. But guess what? God said, listen, I'm, I got you. I got you. I'm going to send the spies. I'm going I'm to let them do what they need to do. And it's, I don't know it's to be true, but they, it, in my studying, it says the man that she married was one of the spies. That's what they said. So look how God, I'm telling you, don't despise what it looked like. Don't despise what it looked like. Because he went there on a mission and got a wife out of it. So don't despise it. So I, wanted, I just want to encourage y'all tonight that in spite of what we're facing as women and even as men, know that God can still use us. Open your mouth and tell your testimony how God delivered you. Tell those things that you say you're going to take to the grave. Don't take them to the grave. Guess what? That's something somebody, somebody need deliverance from that. Somebody need to be set free from that. Amen. Come on, let's pray. God, come on, let's stand all over this place. God, we just thank you tonight. God, we give you glory and praise and honor for who you are. God, we magnify you. God, we thank you, God, that we are imperfect in all of our ways, oh God. But we know that you went to Calvary. We know you went to the cross over 2,000 years ago, God. And you are the perfect God. You are the true and living God. And God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, if we're walking in any way, God, that is contrary to what you have said in your word, that did not line up with your word, God, we ask you right now, God, to forgive us. God, put us back on the potter's wheel, oh God. Make us and mold us, God, in the image that you desire for us to be in, oh God. We thank you for the story of Rahab, oh God. We thank you for our own stories, oh God, our own mess, oh God, our own shortcomings, God, because you be glorified when you bring us out, oh God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're going to do in our lives, what you're going to do in our homes, what you're going to do in our minds, oh God. We ask you for transformation right now in the name of Jesus. We don't think the same way, oh God. We don't act the same way, oh God. We don't move the same way, oh God, but we move according to your word. God, we thank you that you thought about us in advance, oh God, that you felt pleasure God in us even in our mess oh God you felt pleasure in us God so God we thank you for loving us even in our in our shortcomings thank you for loving us even before we were created oh God we thank you Holy Spirit for what you're going to do in our lives oh God we honor you tonight we bless you tonight we give you thanks and we give you glory Holy Spirit rain down your glory on us oh God Holy Spirit rain down your righteousness upon us oh God in the name of Jesus make the crooked way pathway straight oh God in the name of Jesus with every dark place in our life oh God illuminate it with your glory in the name of Jesus God we just honor you tonight we bless you God we thank you that you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think so God we ask we ask you in the name of Jesus use our imperfections for your glory God, use our imperfections for your glory. Wherever we fall to, oh God, we know that you'll be glorified. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Manifest your power in us. Manifest your power through us and in us, oh God. Help us to be a testimony of your glory. Help us to be a testimony of your faith, oh God. Thank you, God. Help us to be a testimony of your grace. We thank you that grace covered every sin. Grace covered every fault. Grace covers us every day. Thank you, God, for your amazing grace. Thank you that grace found us. Yeah, God. Thank you that grace found us, oh God. God, we thank you that grace found us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that grace found us. And God, we'll walk in your ways. We'll walk in your ways, oh God. We'll walk in your ways. We'll walk in your ways. Even if we fail, oh God, we'll walk in your ways. Even if we fall, oh God, we'll walk in your ways. Even if we fall down, God, we get up because we continue to press. We press, oh God. We press in your presence. We press past our situations and our circumstances. We press, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So use us tonight, oh God. Use us, oh God, on our jobs, in our homes, in our communities, oh God. And we'll declare that your name is great. 
You are the supreme God. You are Elohim. You are God and God alone. And there is no one greater than you. There is no one greater than you. So, God, we bless you tonight. We love you, God. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a great big hand clap of praise. Give God a great big shout of hallelujah. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the glory. Use us, oh God. Use us, oh God. Use us, oh God. God, we're afraid, but use us, God. God, we might not sound like somebody else, God, but use us, God. Thank you, Lord God. Use us, Father. We give you glory. We give you glory. God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, anyone that's watching or anyone that's in the house that don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch their hearts. God, you said in your word, the day you hear my voice, heart not your heart. So, God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would open the hearts of the individual, God, that have not declared that you are Lord over their lives. God, draw them near to you, oh God. Let them confess that you are Lord and Savior. Let them confess that you died on the cross, but you rose on the third day with power and authority in your hand. So God, we ask you to forgive us, oh God, of all of our sins, any of our shortcomings, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. Put us back in right standings with you, God. Reconnect us, God, where there's disconnect. God, we thank you and we give you praise, God, for those that have come back to you, God, for those that have confessed that you are Lord and Savior of their lives. Save them, oh God. Rearrange them, oh God. Don't let them rest, oh God, until they have come into the sheepfold, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, for you are the good shepherd. And God, a voice of a stranger, we won't follow, God. We won't follow those voices anymore. God, we won't follow that path anymore, oh God. But God, we're on the straight and narrow path. And God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for rearranging our lives. Thank you for transforming our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we'll be careful to give you the glory. God, you be glorified in our life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We want you to get your offering together, hallelujah. God, be glorified in this house. Glory to God. All month, amen. Uh, Victor, you got the information for the, for the um, offering. All month, uh, we'll be talking about perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. We will still have our corporate prayer on, fourth, on the fourth Wednesday. So we are still in our, um, we will still have our corporate prayer on fourth Wednesday. But all this month, we are talking about perfectly imperfect. And we're going to see how God's just going to do some things in our life, even in our imperfections. Amen. Amen. Pastor Harvest, is there any announcement? We know we have Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Don't forget that uh, Pastor Harvest will be ministering at 3 o'clock at uh, Abundant Life for their church anniversary. Any other announcements that we're missing? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank those that came out tonight. To hear the word of God, you ought to give yourself a hand clap of praise because you could have stayed at home and watched it on TV. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray for the offering. Let's stand and let's pray for the offering. We're going to be dismissed. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this offering, oh God. We thank you, God, that we had a mind to give. We thank you, God, we had the ability to give. We thank you, oh God, that you are opening up windows in heaven and pouring us our blessings that we don't have room enough to receive it. God, you said in your word, oh God, that you can do it. You will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. God, we thank you for the cheer for givers that gave unto the kingdom of God. And so, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you would take, God, that seed, multiply it, oh God, increase it, oh God, that we may use it for your glory, that we may use it, God, to enhance the kingdom, that we may bless those that are in need, oh God. And God, we thank you that you're blessing the people that gave 100-fold return in Jesus' name. So God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, oh God, be ever watchful over us. Take care of us, God. Cover us with your blood. God, go before us, oh God, and make the pathway straight. Go before us, oh God. Go before us, God. Make the pathway straight, God, and we'll be careful to give you the glory. You the honor and you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Pastor Harris said God loves you, and we do too. Be blessed.